Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. The last episode we went ahead and expanded on our first network call to go ahead and define the return type of our call, which is a Kotlin data class that matches our JSON structure here. So if you missed it, go ahead and check it out. And we very simply just changed the text in our text view right here to be the name of the character that we just fetched by their ID. So I think to take this a step further, we can go ahead and actually build out a little bit of a UI here. So taking a look at the Rick and Morty API website here, they have these nice looking cards that you know present a little bit of the information that you would get back from the character's endpoint. However, at this moment, we're really only set up to support fetching one character at a time. So I think we can basically build out the character details screen. And maybe in a later episode, we'll go ahead and implement displaying a list or maybe a grid of characters that we can retrieve from the API. However, that does require paging. So that's going to be a bit more involved. And we're just going to have to uh, wait on that for now. But I think we can kind of take some inspiration here from what they have and build out our own UI and then get something up and running here. So I'm going to go ahead and get to it. Enjoy the time lapse. Okay, welcome back. Thanks for watching if you stuck through that. Uh, but on screen here that we could see, we have a little header image. We have the name of the character, an image view here that's going to denote male or female, and then a couple other pieces of information here. So a little indicator, a little text view here to indicate if the character is still alive, a nice little divider for our UI, and then just little sub pieces of information here to display the origin and the species of the character. So this is coming all from the information that we have available to us here in the JSON response for a particular character. And just in general, that is a pretty good thing to keep in mind uh, when building out your UI, right? You need to, you can only present information or build specific UI components that you have information for. Uh, maybe it's possible that you can create some other fields that don't necessarily exist. For instance, the alive or dead or maybe unknown, I think they put in this, in these cards here as a little green color or yellow or sorry, uh, gray or then a red color here. Um, so you can kind of, you know, manipulate the UI based on some of that information. You don't need the actual color itself to be passed down to you, but otherwise you can only create a UI from the information that you have. So it's important when you are building this, especially if you're doing projects on your own, to really take a look at the data you have at that moment and build the screen accordingly. Because otherwise it can get very hectic and very annoying to try to figure out how you want to accomplish something that might not be feasible. So 
With that being said here, I'm going to go ahead and just update this to be the name text view and then we're going to grab a few other uh, UI elements here. Okay, so here we have our name text view, the header image view, the alive origin and species text views all connected here. And basically we can update our UI once the data has returned here. Uh, also one thing I want to note here, if you might be seeing some of these other little annotations in the sidebar or this blue uh, coloring up here for any modifications. Uh, so I have created a GitHub repository for this project here. Uh, the Android factory slash simple Morty. I will link it down in the description below so you can get to it But just know that all of the content that we create on this channel has a home in github So you can go ahead and pull down the code uh, Access it, you know, take a look at it clone it build it have it on your device as well Or on your computer as well so you can learn interactively So if you haven't checked this out feel free to um, check out the profile and then the corresponding repository for Simple Morty and then everything else we've done on the channel here. So at this point, here we are. We have done our uh, successful check here for the response. And then at this point, we are good to go here. So the name text view dot text will equal the body dot name. The alive text view dot text will equal, and then for our species and origin text views, we will just go ahead and set them to the corresponding values here. Origin is an actual object in our JSON response here, as you can see, but then there is a name for that origin. So we are just referencing the object and then one of its values there with name. Now, the one thing that we don't have support for at the moment is handling the image URL that comes down in the response here. So in order to do that, we will need Picasso, a very popular image loading library in Android. It is another square library and it is basically industry standard. It's literally as simple as one line of code to load your image URLs into image views over the internet. If you are unfamiliar with Picasso, you can definitely look at the documentation here. It is pretty straightforward. However, I have covered this before in a previous episode. So I will link a card on screen now in case you want to check that out. So just like the other ones here, Picasso or Retrofit Moshi, and now we have Picasso. We need to get the latest version, which seems to be 2.8. So we'll go ahead and paste that in and click Sync Now. And while that's rebuilding it, like I said, it is this simple to go ahead and load images dynamically. So we basically call picasso.get to get an instance of this library. We call load, passing in the image URL that we want to load, and then into a, passing in a particular image view that we want to load the image into. So we'll simply just copy this, flip back over to our project, looks like everything has reloaded, and we will just very simply import the library there. We will say into our header image view, the URL that we're loading, body.image. Right. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a whirl, see what we come up with. So this is what the screen used to look like, and this is what our screen looks like now. Realizing we're missing one little part of our UI here, we can very quickly check the character's gender here by accessing the gender field, seeing if it equals male, and the true here that we're passing in as well is to ignore the case. And then if that is true, we will go ahead and set the male image resource that we have. Otherwise, we will set the female image resource that we have. And these are just the you know universal icons for male or female. Should appear right over here. And rerunning the application, we will see, boom, that the male symbol shows up. Okay, so there you have it. We have successfully not only made an API call, but we've gone ahead and actually parsed that network response and then built a screen accordingly. We don't necessarily have a loading state nor are we handling errors very nicely at the moment, but that will come in a later date. And at this point, this kind of looks like a character detail screen that if we were to present the user a list of these items or something that looks like this and they were to go ahead and click on one of these items, I could imagine that they would go to a screen that looks something like this here. Flipping through some other characters here, it does seem like we might need to rework this UI at some point. 
I think the issue here is that these images really are not set up to be to have this aspect ratio of 16 by 9 that we've defaulted to uh, and instead it probably lends itself better to some kind of you know square based image that they have here so maybe we'll go ahead and change that around at some point but for now this is getting the job done as I mentioned earlier it could very well turn out that this screen and this UI something along these lines is the screen that the user goes to after clicking on you know let's say this little list item that we would present to them so if you made it this far I really appreciate a like on the video please do subscribe if you are not already so that you don't miss out on any of the content coming forward moving forward we can go a couple different directions here so I'm gonna go ahead and think about these things overnight try to come up with a plan of attack and we will continue to progress this application from here. Thanks. I'll catch you in the next one.